Welcome to this tutorial on how to connect multiple computers via a VPN to the Unreal multi-user editor. Yesterday was released a webinar on how to use this multi-user editor, so we're not going to go over that. We're just going to show you how we set it up here at Medendum Studios. We're going to use a piece of software for this called SoftEver. It's a VPN, which will be linked below in the description. Here you can find out information about how to set up VPNs and how to use them. But we're just going to be focusing on the download. And depending on what part of your network you are, depends on which client you're going to need. But for this, we're going to start off by downloading the freeware component server. We are also going to need the client for later in the tutorial. So it might be worth downloading that now. Once you have completed that, you'll have two versions of your file. We've renamed them just for ease in this tutorial to server and client. Yours will have all the beta numbers and everything within the file name. We're gonna go ahead and open up the server version and install that. Most of this is just gonna be left standard. So just continuing next, on the first couple of pages and agreeing to the license and it should start installing. Once it has installed, click finish and it will launch this. Because we've connected to this computer before, I have a local host. You may have this or you may not. If not, just click new and it will create this. We're going to go ahead and connect. We know the password for this is 1234 because we created it. It's going to launch us straight into the easy setup. Remote access. We're going to enable the first two and click a VPN server that accepts connections from other sites. I'm going to go ahead and click next and yes. I'm just going to leave the virtual hub name unless this matters to you. For this tutorial we're going to go ahead and set the name to Unreal Videndum and set the above host name. We're then going to choose exit and it's going to launch our mobile options. We're not connecting any mobile connections, so we're just going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to enable the VPN Azure as this allows for a better connection and it is free. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to create our users. So we're going to create three users. We're going to call them tester. Tester one, and we're going to give it a password, which is in this case four zeros. And we're going to just create the other two. From here, we're going to choose to close, and you'll be left with this. We're going to select the uh, hub we have just created and choose the manage virtual hub going to have to choose the option for virtual NAT and enable secure NAT. Once that has been enabled, you are okay to exit and exit again. This has created your virtual server. Now we're going to go ahead and install the client. So you're going to choose your client install file and once again, follow the install steps all the way through, leaving most things default. Now the client has been installed, we're going to go ahead and add a VPN connection. This is going to ask you to install a virtual network adapter in which you're going to choose yes. This is a, the name which you can set your adapter, we're going to leave that as the default and we're going to let it do its thing. Once that has installed, you can go ahead and add another VPN connection. 
you should know your host name from when you were setting up the server, or your administrator would have already sent you this. So we know that ours is unreal addendum at APN, uh, VPN .net. We're going to leave the port number the same, and then from the drop down, we're going to choose the hub. It may take a second, like it is now, to display the hub once it's connected. There we go. Then we're going to use our login, which is tester, and our password to connect. As of today, the 1st of May, we have encountered a few issues with our servers where we needed to go into the advanced settings and choose the no adjustments to the routing table to stop Windows from doing some weird things with our connections, which cause internet lossage and a failure to connect to any of our servers. We can go ahead and click OK now, and that will show us an offline new connection. We can now choose to connect to this, which will give us a IP and connectors to the server. Through the power of magic, we have already connected two other devices to ensure that this is working for the next step, which is connecting to Unreal. So we're going to go ahead and open up our Epic. Oops. We're going to go ahead and launch our Unreal Engine for 24.3. This is the latest version as of today. We are not going to use the preview build, even though that has seen some slight improvements to this function. Once you have launched your Unreal Engine, you can go ahead and create a new game with the third party blueprint just because that's what we're choosing to use for this tutorial. We're going to actually name our project Multi and create the project, leaving everything as default. If you already have a project or you are sharing a project which is built by somebody else, you need to make sure that every user which is connecting to this project starts with the same exact file. That is why we are going ahead and creating a new file and using the same template across all of our devices with the exact same name. This means that all the assets and all the files are the same across all of the computers which are running this. And we didn't have to do any version control as this is the first installation of Unreal on all of those devices. Once we have connected to Unreal and launched the project, we can go ahead and open our plugins folder and search for the multi-user plugin. This can be found either by typing or by going to the developer tools in the built-in section. You want to enable it and you want to restart your Unreal Engine to apply that setting. Now that the multi-user is enabled, we can go ahead and close our plugins and open up our project settings. Scroll down to the plugins and choose the multi-user editing. We're going to go ahead and enable the taskbar button. However, if you choose not to use that, you can go ahead and use the window, developer tools, and the multi-user browser in there to access the same features. We're going to go ahead and set ourselves a username, which is going to be Jonathan, because that is my name, and choose a pretty color. So we're going to choose a nice purple. From here, we're going to once again be asked to restart our uh, Unreal due to the enabling of the taskbar button. So we're going to go ahead and let that happen. Once enabled, we're going to need to do two things. First thing is going down to our UDP messaging and changing a couple of these settings. So we're going to open up a PowerShell. So that is using our run command, which can be found by right clicking here and run or using the Windows button R and open PowerShell. I'm just going to type a simple command IP config. And this will give us our config information about all of our networking. We can see that our adapter, which is the VPN, 
has given us the IP listed here. We're going to need that in this step. I'm going to go ahead and take that and put it into the unicast endpoint, leaving the semicolon and the zero at the end to define the port. Once that has been done, we can go ahead and close this settings. Opening up the browser, we can go ahead and launch a server. This server is how all of our Unreal clients will connect. Once, it, once that has been done, you can see that I have got a previous session from when I was testing this enabled here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then you will see the create a session. Go ahead and click that, give it a session name, and click enter. It will automatically connect you to this session. When the client which you are connecting from connects to the session, they will appear in front of your screen as a separate player. You can see my other computer is connected here. If you want to see session details and information, you can go ahead and open up the session browser again, where you will see the display names and the level they're working on, as well as being able to change the presence and jump to them. You can choose to see the details of the project. So you can show the connection activities, you can show the lock activities, and display the relative times. If a user then chooses to make a change to your project, it syncs as per expected. If you want to understand more about how to use the multi-user editor, we suggest checking out the Unreal webinar which was released on the 30th of April, which will be linked below.